Hi everyone, it's Tammy and I am so glad that you joined me for today's tutorial. This is going to be a gate fold card and I will have the dimensions in the description box below. If I forget for some reason, please just let me know. Um, I don't think I need that. I think that's just extra. I'll toss it. Um, I am going to be using some uh, pattern paper. I will often refer to this as designer series paper because that is what Stampin' Up! calls it. This is not designer series paper. This is uh, just paper from, I don't even know where. I think it's Cartabella, but I'm not sure. But, um, and it doesn't matter. That's the whole point. You just want matching paper. And if you had enough to do all three of these the same, that would be fine too. And this is double-sided, so you could use however you wanted to use it. You know, you could use um, the dots with the flowers, the dots with the dots, these dots with these flowers, however you wanted to do it. So just do you however you want to. And then you also are going to need a um, piece of, well, let's do the base first. You want the base to be a the same size as you would an A2 sized card. So it's five and a half by eight and a half and you didn't score it at all yet. So it's just five and a half by eight and a half ready to be scored. And then I also want a piece that's going to be one and a half inches by nine and three eighths inches. Now, you know our card stock, if, if you've cut this this way to get another piece, or any card stock, to get another piece that's nine inches, you would have to use a whole nother piece so you can cut it this way. So what I do is I take I just cut one and a half inches twice this way. See how this was one piece of cardstock and then had a little more over here like that. <laughs> so that's extra, that piece. But then I cut these both at one and a half and now what I'm going to do is make these, adhere these to each other to make it so that it is nine and three eighths inches. So I just have my ruler handy. And let me turn it to the non-metric side. And so that's eight and a half. And if I want it to be nine and three eighths, I really don't need very much of this over here, but let's see. And this one's kind of hard to read, so I'm gonna count the things. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I just need it nine and three eighths. So I just need a really small piece of this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut both of these. Let's see, I'm just going to haphazardly cut each one of them just a little bit. That one, one of them just a little bit, the other one kind of a lot of bit. Cause I just want it to be nine and three quarters, or nine and three eighths inches. But I don't need it to be, I don't need a ton left over here. So nine and one, two, one, two, three. That's where I want it. And see how it's just overlapping just a little bit there. So I'm going to take my snail adhesive, I'm going to put it on this end, and then I'm going to take my snail adhesive. And I'm going to put it on this end and I'm going to line this up again starting at the zero and then to the nine and one two three eighths inches I'm going to push them both up against the ruler and then I'm just going to put them together so now this measures one and a half inches by nine and three eighths inches and then I also wanted Um, the designer series paper to be cut at five and a quarter inches by one and seven eighths inches. And then I also need a piece of designer series paper that is cut at one and a quarter inches by nine and three eighths inches. So this is the same length as this one but it is a little smaller from top to bottom, if you see what I'm talking about. I think I'm gonna use this side. So you just want coordinating colors that you can work with. 
And what I'm going to do now is score the base. And I also have a piece of A2 sized um, four by five and a quarter that can go in the middle just so it'll give me something nice to write my sentiment on. So I'm gonna take my cutter and score. And I'm going to, well here, let me just do it at the top. I think you guys can see that better. And I want to score this at two and an eighth inch on each side. So this is um, on the eight and a half inch length. I'm going to score it at two and an eighth inch. And then I'm gonna turn it over and do the same thing on this side. Two and an eighth inch. Score that. So now you have two folds that are going to fold in like that. And then I also want to score the piece of paper that you just made that's nine and three eighths inches. I want to score it at two and three eighths on each side. So this is two, one, two, three eighths inch. I'm going to score that here and then I'm turning it over. And I want to score it again at two and one, two, three eighths. So this is going to be our belly band. And then I'm also going to want to score this. So this is one and a quarter by nine and three eighths. So I want to score each side of this at two and three eighths inch as well. Two and one, two, three eighths inch. One, two, three eighths inch. And now we can put this part together. So you want to fold these so that they meet in the middle. I'm just going to take my bone folder and crisp up the edge. And then I'm going to take my, I'm using very vanilla for this because it coordinates better than white. And I'm just going to put this down right in the middle. Just like that. And then on these two flaps is where these go. So they will go just like that or like this, however you choose to do it. And you'll most likely have different paper than I do, so it doesn't matter. Just be sure that if you have paper that has a design that you have it facing the right way. Sometimes that can be a little tricky. When I'm doing cards like this, I mostly try to use paper that it doesn't matter which direction it goes because directional paper can be quite tricky. Especially if it's the first time you're doing that card or that project. Because I have this big orange one up here, I'm gonna move this orange one so it's at the bottom. Or I'm gonna position this orange one. Peach colored one, whatever. Isn't that cute? Oh, it's already cute. So then the belly band, you want to fold those edges in. And I'm just going to double check to make sure that it fits over my card. And it's actually a little bit wide. Hmm, I don't think I like that. You know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> this actually would be a better way to do it now that I just thought of this. Okay, so cut your two strips at one and, what did I say it was, one and a half? Yes, one and a half inches, and then don't worry about measuring the nine and three eighths inches. Instead, put your snail adhesive where you know you're gonna want it on both sides. And then, once you have the card made, use that as your guideline as how you want it. You're going to wrap this around and just have a meet. And 
Now, because I peeled that off, I'm going to put a little bit of glue down here just so it won't come up. <laughs> so that means my designer series paper is probably scored at the wrong place. I was thinking that when I was doing it. What you should probably do is put your designer series paper down first and see how it covers up that nicely. You can't even really tell that it's there. And it's cut a little long anyway. So, yeah, let's just put the designer series paper down. And I'm going to pretend like I did not score this, even though we both know I did, or we all know I did. We're just pretending I didn't score it. And clearly, I didn't measure correctly. So, I'm just going to give it a haircut. And then I'm just going to fold it with the regular cardstock. And there we go. Now it's folded exactly where it needs to be. And this will slide, hopefully, over this card. It's a little tight now. Yikes, it's a little bit tight, but I think I can get it to work if I, there we go. Yes, it, if I have this closed, it will work out better. It works just fine. So this is what it's going to look like, but I need something right here to close this. Now you could do Velcro closure and just leave it like that or a magnetic closure and leave it like that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna seal this and this isn't going to even open up it's just going to be sealed like this and it's going to be a belly band where you just pull it off. So you can do it however you'd like, but that's how I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to, you know what, I think I'll put that end on that end. So I like to put glue on both sides of what I'm sticking just because I know that that makes it extra um, stable. And then I love snail adhesive because if you get some too far out, you can just rub your finger along it and it will come right off. So here we go. Yes, see how well that slides. Perfect. And then I picked out a stamp and you can do whatever you want. You can draw a picture, you can leave it just like that, whatever. I am going to stamp and I have a cute butterfly stamp. And it's a two-stepper stamp. So I'm going to start with my base and yeah that will look good and I want this to be the lightest of the colors that I have and I've picked out three different colors this is the lightest so I'm going to use this color as the lightest and I know I'm not sharing with you like a lot of the products that I'm using because honestly I'm not trying to sell you anything on these cards. I'm just giving you tutorials. It doesn't matter if you, I sell Stampin' Up! If you want to use Stampin' Up! products, by all means, I would love to be your demonstrator. I am, I am not so blind to say that we have the best products out there and there's nothing else that you could use that would measure up. I would be a fool to say anything of the sort because I know that there are wonderful things from everyone. So you, Use what you have is what I'm saying. And then you can take your next lightest color, which I'm thinking might be this. It might be that one. I don't know. Um, it really doesn't matter on this particular stamp, but usually you want to go from lightest to darkest. And there are three steps to this. And then I'm just going to stamp this right on top of the pink color that I've already stamped. Just like that. And I'm using my cleaner over here. Now I do love my cleaner, but that's personal opinion. It is my one of my favorite things. My stamp and scrub. And then I'm going to use the Marina Mist as the last one. Again, it does not matter what colors you use as long as they coordinate with your card and in this particular one, you need three of them, or you could do different shades of the same co color. Hopefully, 
hopefully I'm getting that straight. And then just, you know, it's just pretty. Now I think that there might be a body too. I don't even remember what's in this stamp set. Let me look. Oh yes, good. Because it needs something there, doesn't it? So I think it's, is it this one? This one. Goodness, I don't even know. I guess I'll go with the little one. Heck, I don't know. And I guess I need a different color for that too. Let's use do 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 close to cocoa. Or let's use brown. like that now I do have die cuts that I could use to cut this out but honestly this is such a simple cutout I'm not even gonna worry about it um, I often will do that just because I don't mind fussy cutting if you don't like it and you have die cuts then by all means you can do that too I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down on my cutter I do this for two reasons. One reason is so that my scraps are all square and not all wonky and cut out funny. So this is a scrap that I can use on something else. This one I'm going to throw away. And then I also like to do it because it makes cutting a little easier because I don't have all that paper to deal with. And when you're cutting, it's best to leave the scissors straight and cut by moving your paper. There are little antenna stickers or stamp if you want to use that too. I don't think I'm going to use it because they're so tiny. Just a little piece of paper that doesn't want to come off. Come off, come off, wherever you are. Crazy little piece of paper. Now it's going to bug me because it's not wanting to come off and it's just barely stuck on there. There we go. Whew! Fighting with the dang on paper. Oh, it's still not off all the way. Got it. Whew. All right. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna get my punch. I have a scallop punch. in that piece of cardstock that I just threw away. I'm gonna find it, see if it's big enough.
punch that out. Awesome. Okay, and then I'm going to take this. Put it down on the belly band and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take oh, here, this little tool and I'm going to put a line on each side of his body and my bone folder and hold his body, fold his little wing up. Hold his body, fold his little wing up. And then I will take some glue and put it on his little body. And then I will put that down like that. And then I'm going to take some dimensionals, if I can find them. Somebody needs to clean off their desk. I don't know who, but somebody does. Here are some dimensionals. Some pop dots. And I'm going to put one, well, let's see. I want to make sure it's on the scallop and that you can't see it from the front of the butterfly. So I may have to cut it down. Okay, there we go, that works. This one's already cut. Well, I just ripped his little body off. Oh well. That's what you get for crafting along the way. I hadn't planned, I mean I planned it out, but I hadn't totally planned all of it and honestly it's not a big deal if his body is off because oh well yes it is because I want it to be stuck down there Dag nabbit. okay let me glue that little body again because I want the wings to stick up further than the body so let me push him down and put that down I'm going to take my bone folder again. This is like a third arm sometimes. I'm just going to hold the body down until it dries. It usually doesn't take very long, maybe 30 seconds or so for this uh, glue. All right, so then see how that is? The body's down and the wings are kind of raised because of the dimensionals. And then you just pull this off and then here is your card. Isn't that cute? And this is called a gate fold card. And there you go, that's that. So I hope you guys like that tutorial and stay tuned next week. There will be a whole nother something something. Thanks so much, bye-bye.